Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. Folks, in this video, I want to share with you something, a problem that happened with this LS430 that I've never seen happen with any Toyota Lexus model before. I've been working on Toyota Lexus for a very long time and this is the first time I run into this. Over here is the power steering pump out of this car. Now, if you own an LS400, you would have gone through a power steering or two throughout the life of the car. They do fail on those. But if you have an LS430, if you go to the junkyard and find one that's all crushed up from an accident and about to be completely crushed and sent to become patio furniture, uh, you will see that the power steering pump will still be perfectly fine. So is with all Toyotas really. They don't have power steering issues. I mean, even when you run them low on fluid, they will whine, you put fluid, they're fine. But this one failed and failed catastrophically with a matter of minutes. It was running perfectly fine. We were doing work on the car. We took it for a drive and all of a sudden it just started whining. By the time it turned around, come back to the shop, we lost power steering. It's complete, absolute failure. So you chalk it up to old age. Well, it's 2004, it's old, let's just replace the pump. I don't like that. There's always the why. The, what differentiates parts replacements from people that diagnose cars is the why. Most people skip the why. But I just, you develop a gut feeling as a mechanic. There's something more to this than just the pump. I just didn't like it. So I started investigating. Of course, there's metal debris everywhere. We had to flush the system multiple times. But I found this is the culprit. To most people, this is just a plastic bottle, contains the fluid, there's nothing really fancy about it. But actually, in the big line, there's usually a, most Toyotas, there's a big line, there's a small line. Small line is the return, this is the supply. This is what goes directly to the pump. Well, there is a screen here. For some reason, they put a screen here and that screen is completely clogged. I tried, we took this out of the car, we soaked it in, in cleaner, we tried and compressed air and brushes and nothing. Its screen is just welded shut. And that happened partly because of the story of this car. This car sat for a long time and this is probably the original fluid. So let's, before we start talking about the story of this car that you've been seeing here for a long time, I wanted to share it with you and show you the progress on it actually. If you own a Toyota in your power steering fluid, you always wonder, should I replace it? When should I replace it? Let's put a good interval of 10 years. 10 years, or if you see staining. Now, this reservoir is empty, has no fluid. But you see the stain mark right here? This is unbelievable. Look at this stain. Looks like it's full of fluid. And then when you take the fill cap, unbelievable. Look at this. It's just all grimy and just done. Very hard to show you the screen, very hard to show you inside, but it's full of grime. You're not going to get that grime off unless you basically cut this thing in half, go at it with a brush, and agitate everything, and then re-agitate it. And then by the time you do all that, you basically destroyed this reservoir. So what we ended up doing in this car, put a new power steering pump, flush the lines, and then replace the reservoir. I've never seen this happen, folks. Be careful. If you see your fluid staining your bottle, replace it immediately. And replace it, drive it for a month, replace it again if its fluid is not clear. And this is the problem. Let me show you the new reservoir and you'll see what we're having with this. So here is the new reservoir. Looks very nice and pretty. But the fluid is still dark. This is after probably three or four flushes. We I wanna, I mean, ran out of the flush. We're going to get some more and continue to clean at it until it's a little clearer. At least get it a little bit more clear, get more debris out. But this is something that I've never seen before in Toyotas. Usually the power steering system, other than the leaks that they have, you know, rack and pinion, some of them the power steering pump would leak, very rare. Um, return lines, lines will leak, but not the pump just fails. Even when you run them low, they'll take the beating. After all, they we're talking Toyota Lexus, not GM, which gets a power steering pump every other oil change. Thank God they went to uh, electric power steering. Now they don't have the uh, service of the replacing the pump. But having said that, this car has been here since we opened the shop just over two months ago. 
The original owner of this car is an older lady. She got in an accident in this car. And you can see this headlight is clear, this headlight is yellow. She got an accident in this car and her family determined she cannot drive anymore because unfortunately her vision is not well. So this car sat between her driveway and garage multiple years, undriven, just sitting there. It's a beautiful, low mile, one owner car that has a full service history up to that point. The current owner of the car just bought this from the original owner paid a very good price in my opinion for a car this preserved we've seen this car before when we did the time about video it has zero rust it's from alabama but there was a collection of common problems which we're going to address them here to me this is the best ls to buy not the ls460 the ls460 just falls apart even with good maintenance this however doesn't but they do have their common quirks and parts are also very expensive for this the first thing, and we've talked about this in, the, in a previous video, is the mirrors. Now, the mirrors are all fixed, beautiful metal. This is a metal mirror, not a plastic one, at, at least a shell of it. This mirror is $700 each. And the best part is when you pay $700 each, it comes painted, beautiful. It doesn't come with a glass. The glass is another $485. In this case, we, were, we got lucky. We were able to save the original glass and reuse it, but you see something as simple as a mirror. It's a common one, they break and they start flapping around, especially if you live in, in heat zones, not really a lot, not as common in the Chicago area. But something else that is equally common, the door locks. They love to go out on these. I mean, one after one. And the common symptom with these, and this is what I want you to look at if you're ever looking to buy one. You unlock the door, they work. You lock it, do you see the, the lock kind of moves slowly? If you activate it three, four times, it stops working completely. The motor is just weak. Now, each door is an average of $400 for the actuator. If you, however, has the Ultra model, which I actually do not recommend you buy the Ultra, it has air suspension, disaster, and then it has soft closed doors. If you have one of those and the door lock goes out, it's $1,000 per door to fix the door locks. And they have a habit of going one after one. It's just how it is. Some people get lucky and just the driver's goes, which is the most common. But some of them, all of them go at the same time, like this one. We've actually replaced all four door lock actuators on this because I initially told the owner, why don't we just do the drivers and the passengers maybe, and then in the future, do the rears when it's possible. He didn't want it. He wanted to bring this car back to its former glory. Let's do all four door locks. Let's do the mirrors. And we did all that. But something else that this car have, unfortunately, because it's sat outside, it has a lot of hail damage all over it on the hood, on the roof. Might be harder to see on camera. We're going to try our best here. Aero's going to try his best to show you. But there's a lot of hail damage on this. This is next. This is not my area of specialty. I don't do paint and body and the paint is really being baked by the sun. It really needs some paint work, some restoration, not really paint job, but you know, some paint correction, if you would, a proper one. But something else that is common with these and uh, this is going to take us inside the car. So let me show you what else we did here inside we had to do some radio work. This is the navigation screen and the AC controls out of this car. Most people assume this is the radio. This is actually not the radio. The radio is right here. But on these, especially the 2004, more than the other years, there are two common problems with these. First, the screen stops responding. There's something called a digitizer, which is basically the screen itself, goes out, you can DIY this, you know, buy one off eBay or something and change it yourself, or you can send it to a repair shop. This screen works on this, but what doesn't work is the controls for the AC, and basically you have no control over the AC because they decided the AC controls are inside the screen. Something happens in the circuit board and it stops communicating, and that's the problem, because this is a computer, basically, that communicates with the AC computer to kind of relay the information back and forth. The AC works, but it's just you can't control it through you. You just can just change the temperature because these buttons are not connected to the screen. So 
we were at a kind of a crossroad after a long conversation with the owner about this. If we send this for a repair, we're talking like $700 just to bring the OEM one back. I told him if we're going to send this for a repair, let's replace the digitizer as well because I don't want this to go in out after a month. But then he asked me, he wanted a little bit better amenities, kind of more modern stuff, maybe Bluetooth music, maybe some Apple CarPlay or whatnot. So we ended up settling for this unit. This is, I don't even know what the company is from, China maybe, probably, or Russia, or I don't know where. They're called Tayes. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation for it. Pretty cool screen, but what's cool about it is this is designed for this car. So you retain your AC controls. Works pretty good so far. Don't know how long it's going to last. This is, after all, aftermarket accessories, but it kind of comes designed. It has this bezel around it. Everything works. All the AC controls work. The steering wheel controls work. These knobs work. So that's pretty cool. Let's check it out here. So, the biggest thing is, here's your AC controls already, but uh, if we go here, you can actually control everything. AC on, here's the fan control, and then the cool thing is this has oscillating vents. And they actually work, and this is another common problem with these, when they stop working. This will take a minute because it has to calibrate every time, and then they start oscillating. Very cool feature. Usually these go out and these are very expensive. They are separate from the radio. They just clip into it. So other than that, this radio actually has Apple CarPlay. It has all these apps and features. They're endless. There's a lot because this is an Android radio. Pretty cool. But the thing about the uh, AC controls, and this is the weird part. If you have an LS and you just saw this and you like it, you can't control the temperature from here. It has to be through the buttons. And they're in centigrade. There might be an option to change it to Fahrenheit. I really, this is not my department again, aftermarket stuff, but works pretty good. Has Apple CarPlay, has tons of features, works pretty good for the little time that we've been testing it here. So uh, there's options for these if you want to kind of modernize them. But we have another couple problems with this car that remain. So this is the key, only key that came with this car. You notice something about this key is if I take the physical key and I put it in the glove box to lock it, it won't even go in. And that's because this is a valet key and this is a problem because when you have a valet key you can't really program new keys and the previous owner they had this what looks like a brand new key to me it even comes with a little bag but the son of the previous owner told the current owner that this might have been bought off of amazon and that's a red flag because if this has been programmed to another car we have problems but the curious thing is if I put this key here it works so somebody cut this key perhaps took it to a dealership to get a program and then discovered that this is a valet key this is a much more complicated process to get this to program because you can't program this off of valet key you need an actual master key so now you have to reset the whole thing that's one problem the other one is the steering wheel and this is another common one with these the telescoping works up and down, nothing. Again, after a long consult with the, or the current owner, I told him, if you're comfortable with your seating position, I mean, how often do you really adjust your steering column? Not that often. And he's, he agreed. Uh, he's not the type that adjusts. Some people like to pull it up so they can get out, although this one does it automatically. So we're going to leave this one. But the problem with this key situation is you can't use the smart key. You notice every time I have to put the key, and this has a smart key. You can put this in your pocket, open the doors, and turn this key deal you on to start the car. Well, this is the little things that we're going to have to leave for now until he decides what's going on. And you notice something else on this dash. It's been uh, kind of beaten by the sun a little bit. You see bubbling here very badly here. Uh, I hope the owner of this car, if you're watching this, after you see this video, you don't call me and you say, let's put a dash, because uh, the bill is very high. I, I just don't, I 
don't want him spending more money here. I think the car is safe. We can live with a few cosmetic things. It's 2004. I think we have fixed everything that needs fixing in this car to make it road worthy at this point. So the next time you shop for an LS, don't skip over these folks. They can get expensive because they do have their common quirks and problems, but this is way better than the LS460. For starters, this is DIY friendly, very DIY friendly actually, but parts are expensive. I mean, between the door locks, the mirrors, if, if the company that's gonna restore this headlight and try to get it as shiny and, and good looking as this one can't do that, that's a very expensive headlight. This is the thing with these. They are a lot more reliable than the LS460. Parts are more available, kind of on a lower price level. If you want to keep it on a budget, buy aftermarket stuff, I don't encourage you to do that, but options are available, unlike the LS460, which is just not DIY friendly. The other thing with these, avoid the Ultra One. Air suspension, very expensive. You can convert it, but the options you're getting with the Ultra are not worth it. The soft closed door, the air suspension. I mean, this, I can still cannot tell the difference between the air suspension one and the coil spring one like this one. They just both ride like a cloud and beautiful. So if you're out shopping for one of these, you know some of their common problems now, check them, focus on them, because otherwise these cars do not have a lot of common problems. Now, this car has one more thing that we are dealing with before she's ready to actually go to the detail shop. They're gonna do the whole paint correcting and fix the hail damage. During the test drive, I noticed a noise from the back and it was actually the left rear shock. They just decided to spring a leak, start making noise. So we actually have two shocks, two mounts on order for this car, We're waiting for it to arrive and we'll get that done and then she gets a clean bill of health from me because all the fluids, we went through all the fluids, we did the brakes, he already put tires. The only thing we also need to do is send it out for an alignment and we want to rebalance the wheels. There's a little bit of vibration at higher speeds. I don't do wheel balance here, so we're going to send it out to the dealership. Hopefully they will make us proud because uh, this needs a road force balance to get them perfect because this, is, this needs to ride like a cloud because it is a very nice car. It needs a really good detail, but I have to admit one thing though. Uh, don't tell Mrs. Car Care not this. Just keep it between us. Probably not the best place to say you keep it between us, but I'm falling in love with this thing. And uh, the current owner of the car, if one day you call me and uh, I send you a very big check and tell you have a nice day, please don't get mad. I, I'm not gonna do that, but Falling in love here, this is a very nice car. I know, you know, you have the hail damage and all these expenses, but just when you drive it, it just, I love big sedans. I own an S-Class and uh, uh, I think the worst thing about this car is better than the S-Class from reliability, but the S-Class has its, you know, the way it drives and everything, but this is up there with that. Folks, let's recap real quick. LS 430s, avoid the Ultra, check the common problems. Power steering, especially the older cars, that are, most of the cars that have power steering now are over 10 years old. Replace the fluid, check your reservoirs that they don't have sludge and, and stuff kind of debris accumulating inside because you clog this, this pump goes, and the original pumps are very expensive on Toyotas. And please don't go aftermarket because then you join GM on their other, every other oil change, you put a power steering pump. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.